I guess I'm supposed to know. I guess you're supposed to ban since we're here. No, we're okay. How do you feel? Well, Tanner, mm -hmm. I learned last year, and you're like, oh, I have so many ideas, right? <laughs> I love kids. Ever since I can remember, I've worked with kids babysitting, maybe to Bible school. I even have three of my own. They're teenagers. I don't like them so much right now. But they're teenagers. I have three kids. Now, I'm guessing you like kids too. So in all my years of working with kids, I have found four secrets to student engagement. Relationships come first. So last spring, uh, so just background, Jen kind of shared you our story. We connected at PNC and started this book club. For, maybe you got a book this morning? When you want, mm -hmm. you're learning. It's been amazing, but I hope you take time to read it. So we did a book club, and we actually went down to Pittsburgh and heard Ryan and Greg speak at the Heinz History Center. And Ryan is a former teacher, the co-author of the book. And he was asked, what would you do differently after studying the life of Fred Rogers? What would you do differently if you went back into the classroom? Without, a, without a hesitation, he said, I would spend the first two weeks getting to know my learners. Two weeks. Maybe I spend a day, and then it's right into the curriculum. Two weeks. This is a challenge. Two weeks to get to know your learners. Those relationships come first. In fact, it reminded me of something that John, you may have lost his name, John Craig, he was here yesterday. He spoke last year at the summit. And what happened to him? <laughs> so I never heard this before. Some of you, I know some of you have heard the two by ten. He said to us, um, uh, relationships first. Spend two minutes, ten days in a row, getting to know your learners individually, asking them questions, and being curious about them. In fact, this is a quote from when you wonder you're learning. We have to be curious about kids. We have to let them be creative in the ways that they reveal themselves to us. We have to listen to them deeply, talk to them lovingly, and we have to show up for them if we want them to show up for us. Wow, isn't that powerful? And I've heard it said like this, 90% of helping kids is just showing up. We have to show them we care, and that is the first secret to student engagement. The second is this, passion. Jen gave us the definition yesterday, passion, that strong emotion. And we know it's hard to maintain that strong emotion all year unless we do this. Remember your why. Why are you here? Why are you a teacher? Why are you doing what you do? And if you were at Pete and see last February, you saw this guy, and he said these two words. Because kids, this is Dr. Brown. He's an amazing person of all on Twitter. I know Twitter. So, because kids. But it's hard to remember our why all the time. So we need to do what brings us joy. Bring to your classroom things that bring you joy. Now, I'm not asking you to Marie Kondo everything to see if it sparks joy. It's not what we're saying. But what are some tech ideas? What are some gamification if you're in my session today? What are some tech tools that you can do to bring joy to your classroom? But maybe it's the people you work with. Hopefully you find at least one person in your building who's your marigold. Find your marigold. The Cult of Pedagogy in 2013 wrote a blog article to find your marigold. Now, if you know what gardening, maybe you do, maybe you don't, a marigold is a companion plant. And a marigold is supposed to be planted next to other plants to help them grow and nourish and flourish. So one would plant a marigold next to your tomato plants, and then the bunny rabbits, sorry, Karen, don't come and eat your <laughs> tomatoes. So find your marigold. Who can encourage you? Who can support you? Who will help you grow? And she also said in the article to avoid the walnut trees. 
because they're toxic and they won't help you grow. And if you find your miracle, then you also need to find your tribe. Congratulations, you are now part of our KCI tribe. So the third spirit is the Goldilocks effect. You remember Goldilocks? So find activities to do in your classroom that aren't too hard, that aren't too easy, but are just right. Just like the porridge and the beds and the chairs and the storage and the box. Um, so while it can be challenging to do so, we have to find those, that middle ground. And we have to find our just right that are interesting and relevant. If you know, you know. <laughs> The last secret is fail forward, and you've heard us say that a lot here this week, and we even have a whole board. But I gotta tell you, I went to Kennedy Space Center this summer, and I saw this. Have you seen that? Failure is not an option. And that bothered me, because that goes against everything I do in my classroom. So it got to me to thinking, obviously, when they were, you know, people stuck on the moon and failure was not an option, they had to discover a way to get them home. But when, for educators, is failure not an option? And then I, I thought of this. I cannot fail my learners. We cannot fail our learners. But we will fail to engage them 100% of the time. It's just not going to happen. And when I fail, we fail forward with our educators growth mindset. We have to make mistakes in front of our students and we have to let them see us make mistakes. So four secrets to student engagement, they're not secrets. It's just things that we need to be reminded of as educators. And to close, this is from uh, Dave Burgess in his book, Teach Like a Pirate. And he says, provide an uncommon experience for your students and they will reward you with uncommon effort 